The Mike O Radio Show on 102.5 The Bone. Let us go for a little bit. Friday night, she sits alone again. Wondering when she'll have a chance. She feels a cold seat then. Her head begins to spin. Resignation as the shadows dance. She said, I'm just an ordinary sort of girl. By the bone on a Saturday afternoon. That is Ordinary Girl, a new release by an artist and also a very, very successful business person. Yeah. Entrepreneur, as they like to call them. That is Zach Bear. And I think we have Zach on the line. Zach Bear? Hey, Mike. How's it going? Good. How you doing? How are you? Welcome to the Mike O Radio Show, 102.5 The Bone in Tampa. How are you today? I, I love it. I'm doing great. And yourself? I cannot complain. Uh, I'm the host of the show. My name is Mike Oliveira. We got Corey. Cardinal, who is over there. He answered your call. We got Ryan Hoppy running our controls, and we got Denise. Denise, who is on a remote location on the water, simping uh, <laughs> some uh, drinks as we speak right now. Where are you <laughs> calling us from, Zach? Exactly where I'd like to be. <laughs> I'm actually in the uh, the very cold right now, uh, metropolis of Memphis, Tennessee. Ah, Ooh. great barbecue there, they say. Uh, yeah, it is good, you know. Uh, I mean, quite frankly, I, right now, I'd rather be Sipping drinks on the water in St. Pete as well, but uh, you know I can't uh, can't complain. So uh, for our listeners, Zach not only has he's worked with a ton of artists and opened for a ton of bands like Boston and Peter Frampton, and mm-hmm. you know worked in the music industry for a long time. But the part that catches me because I fancy myself a business guy and like follow a lot of the stuff that goes on. I watch a lot of CNBC. That's like my passion. Cool. And uh, you did a deal with a guy who's on Shark Tank. There, he also owns some basketball team called the Mavericks, named Mark Cuban. <laughs> Um, he's somewhat, I don't I've never, not a lot of people have heard of him, but um, I think you have. And uh, you did a deal with him. So I want you to tell us a lot, a uh, little bit about the, the background with him there. Yeah. So um, back uh, when I was living in uh, Dallas, uh, I had started a company called uh, Immediate Tech, which is a, was a technology based company. And we ended up acquiring a fledgling company uh, called uh, uh, Disc Live, uh, D I S C L I V E. And uh, that company, and more or less, I'm still involved in, in, in the same type of concept uh, today, but uh, we would follow major artists around uh, on their tours and record them and release the content to fans immediately after the show. Uh, so, you know, you mentioned Peter Frampton. We did about 110 shows with Peter Frampton. Uh, we've done Slash and Debo Rob and Thomas. Bonnie and just tons of others. Yeah. Rob Thomas, yeah, yeah, most recently, exactly. Uh, and uh, during that time, um, we got a call from uh, an unnamed uh, uh, investor representative and, and was told that we had a high net worth individual interested in uh, investing and, you know, possibly buying the company. And it turned out to be turned out to be Mark. And uh, uh, we sold 90 uh, percent interest uh, in the public entity uh, to Mark and. Uh, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. You know, he uh, he actually ended up getting, getting hold of the public company and, uh, you know, putting his own interest into that. And uh, I ended up uh, spinning back out uh, and continuing with the uh, Disc Live concept yep. uh, over the, you know, since uh, 2006, basically. Oh, that's nice. so cool. So you pretty much, you have, um, you have Mark Cuban's phone number, right? His cell? <laughs> uh, I used to. I used to. I, lost that a long time I, was, I was wondering if you could just pop in a caller. No, I'm kidding. I wouldn't put you on the spot like that's that. Funny. But I think that's such a cool concept that you came up with something. He's been very brilliant. He was one of the first forerunners of streaming services for radio. He sold broadcast.com, as you know, uh, for millions upon millions of dollars. And uh, I think it was more than millions. I think it was like a billion with a B uh, that he sold that entity. Yeah, he's at just, least. Yeah, he's just a great uh, business guy. And I, I mean, 
watching him on Shark Tank is fun, and I follow him on social media. I think he's just he's not only is he really, flashy, yeah. but he's brilliant. Mm-hmm. He's just I mean, I would just like to if I could spend five minutes just picking his brain. I just think the time that people on Shark Tank talk with him and the way he toys with them, I think he's uh, incredible. Tell me about Ordinary Girl and the story behind that, because I know it's got some really uh, deep meanings and roots, especially with everything going on today, uh, with everything we're dealing with. What is? Give us a little bit of the background that uh, that's behind the lyrics. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, so I, I actually wrote that song a pretty good number of years ago for a young girl who was uh, at the time, committing, uh, considering, uh, you know, committing suicide, and we were able to surround her with love and support, and uh, she eventually changed her mind and, and decided not to, thankfully. Thank um, God. And mm-hmm. I'd written that song, you know, for the, for that reason, and then I ended up kind of putting it up on the shelf uh, and never really did anything with it. And then uh, two years ago, this past August, um, we lost one of our employees at my one of my music venues, Rock House Live, uh, here in Memphis. Um, to suicide, unfortunately. Oh, uh, she was only uh, 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 28 years old at the time, and it was just a huge, you know, shock <sighs> for everybody. And I started thinking about, you know, suicide awareness and reviving that song. And uh, over the course of, I don't know, the next several months, um, uh, ended up hitting the pandemic and ended up with a bunch of time on my hands. And I'm like, you know, with this going on, who knows if I'm ever going to have the chance to really record another record um, that has this kind of meaning. So we ended up uh, getting the studio with uh, our Grammy-winning producer, Skid Mills, uh, who did Saving Able and yep. has worked with bands like Three Doors Down and a bunch of other ones. Nice. Um, and knocked out Ordinary Girl and ended up doing uh, the entire EP. Yeah, you have six songs and, on uh, it. Uh, yeah, six songs on the EP. And uh, throughout the course of getting this, song, uh, you know, out to the public and, and getting some interest in it, uh, I was introduced to a really cool guy in New York by the name of uh, Zach Martin, who does a radio show and some other stuff up there. And we were talking about suicide awareness and, you know, how, you know, how important it is now more than ever, being Definitely. that a lot of people are isolated and, you know, not able mm-hmm. to get out. And he introduced me to uh, the American Foundation for Suicide, suicide Prevention. Uh, prevent- yeah, we deal exactly, with them a lot down exactly. here. Well, and that's that's really good because uh, one of the things that that we decided to do was to donate uh, 20% of any of the streaming or sales proceeds from uh, Ordinary Girl and the EP uh, to the local chapters of uh, the AFSP, you know, depending on where the song is played. So anybody there in in Florida who's streaming or uh, downloading the track, uh, 20% of the proceeds of that will actually go to that chapter of uh, the foundation. Wow, that's that's amazing. So, uh, background for the radio station here: we're owned by Cox Media Group, which is uh, we have six radio stations here in the Tampa Bay area. And around May, for around mental health awareness, and then uh, September and October uh, for suicide prevention, we partner with to write exactly. "Love on Her Arms," which is uh, a, a local based charity in the state of Florida uh, that helps to you know love people that they matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also work with AFSP. I mean, they're a great organization there. We work with Tara, who's the local people down here. And then there's a guy here locally who used to be my old uh, assistant. He's gone on to bigger and better things, thank God, instead of working for me. <laughs> but uh, he does a podcast. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever heard it, but it's called uh, A Place for My Head. And it's a podcast that talks oh, yeah. about mental health. And if you haven't heard it, it's very powerful. Oh, nice. It touches on a lot of those things in those instances. And like you mentioned, everything that we're going through right now from this pandemic, one, it's hitting us, you know, as, as obviously something that's just terrible to our country and to people. And it's, you know, families, people who haven't seen their parents who are in nursing homes yep. or if we're going to get together for our Thanksgiving meals with family, is it safe to do so? And all the mental anguish, not only that job loss, uh, loss of money, not being, you know, people That's being terrible. sick and mm-hmm. you know, still dealing with the after effects. There's so many. I mean, this thing has spoked out into so many different areas of people's lives and mental health right now is just so paramount as far as taking care of it and taking care of that space between yeah, it, your two ears. Really, it's, it, I mean, it's, uh, the, the, the mental health of people these days are it, it's terrible because of this uh, pandemic and the isolation that many people feel. I mean, you know, a lot of people may not have relatives or friends, uh, uh, even, you know, maybe not in the same city, but maybe not at all. And you get isolated and cooped up in your apartment or your house or whatever. And, uh, it, you know, it, it just gets worse and worse and worse, you know, and this is the time more than anything that, that we need to be able to, 
to reach out to people and for people who feel like they might need a friend or someone to talk to, for them to reach out to those who are willing to, to talk and listen. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's just like you only got one life to live and you got to make the best of it. And sometimes is that that doubt and feeling of being alone and in the fight by yourself and not having anywhere to turn to. And I just think it's so important to reach out and, and get the help and get, you know, get yourself in your head in the in the right frame again, because it is so difficult. Life is hard enough without a pandemic. And then you throw all that into and all the <laughs> different different barriers that it has presented and all the challenges I mean, in my opinion, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny or shocking or being, you know, sarcastic, but if we could all get through 2020 in some <laughs> realm or form, you could pretty much get through anything because it, it this is really tough in a terrible any, year. anyone's <laughs> spirit, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it really, it's been a, it's been a terrible year and, you know, we're losing musicians left and right. I mean, yeah. it's been horrible for that. And, and, uh, you know, I mean, despite everything, you know, at, at, there is outpouring of love and support. And you see all the first responders who are literally putting their lives on the line every single day of the week. And, you know, in, in many, many ways, the challenging times have brought a lot of people together. Uh, you know, so there, I think there might be a, a silver lining at the end of the day. And, um, you know, we're all going to get through this, but it's just going to, you know, we've got a, a ways to go. I mean, who knows when we're, we'll actually have you know, a vaccine or really, you know, promising treatment. Sure. Um, but, you know, obviously, hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> As an artist, I'm sure, and especially being a businessman, but I'm, I'm sure you just love the feel of playing live. And I mean, I know you're probably looking forward oh, to yeah. when you could do that again, you know, what, not whether it's safely or whether, you know, we come out of this. I mean, do you have plans in place for when that happens, when that opportunity arises? Yeah, I mean, you know, our, our kind of plan, um, you know, since the pandemic struck, has been, uh, you know, for this year and the remainder of this year to really focus on getting the single out there and getting the message out there and really raising awareness. And, um, you know, there are starting to be some shows bubbling up. Yep. And from an indus- you know, from an industry standpoint, and, the, you know, the, the, the common theme through the, the entire music industry is that we really don't think major concerts are going to come back in any type of form, maybe even until 2022. Yeah. Um, but I do think that smaller shows, maybe theater shows and outdoor shed uh, shows uh, will come back, um, you know, in the spring and summertime of 2021. And we're kind of planning on, you know, uh, you know, spring 2021 is when we're really going to start, you know, hitting the, hitting the turf and playing some shows. Now we did a, we did a, a, um, a benefit show. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, for the a- AFSP, um, a couple of weeks ago here in Memphis, and it was the first time we played in five months. And wow. it was, you know, like we were on fire. It was <laughs> so yeah. so overdue, you know, but we're, you know, we're very much looking forward to getting out and doing some shows. And obviously uh, Tampa St. Pete is high on my list. I, I love that whole area and fell in love with it several years ago. And I'm, I'm actually there relatively frequently. Yeah, this is a great live music area. I mean, the support for live music and venues here. Is just incredible. And the one thing I got to say is that as much as it's hurt the artists uh, from a touring standpoint, the support, the the tour managers, the road crew, the merchandise sellers, the people who work at the venues, it's, this oh, has really everybody. impacted them greatly. Oh, it, it, it's terrible, you know. And I, I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's a there's a uh, an organization called NEVA, National Independent Venue Association, that has come together and has been lobbying, you know, Congress to... Uh, mm-hmm. pass a bill that will, um, uh, you know, help these really small uh, live music places uh, survive when there hasn't been anything, you know, going on. And a lot of major artists have gotten involved with this movement. Um, you've probably heard of Save Our Stages. Yep. Yep. And, you know, guys like the Foo Fighters and just many others have, you know, contributed their talent and their time in order to try to bring awareness to the fact that many of these, the people you just mentioned, you know, the, the techs and the crews and the, the lighting guys and the uh, you know, the roadies are all suffering, you know, because there's nothing to do right now. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a tragedy, but I'm, you know, giving the way I look at it is that every day that we're in this, it's another day closer to coming out of it and ending it and moving on. Yep. Um, it's something that, you know, we, we always got to keep in on our radar and being cognizant and safe about, but I also think too, that we're going to come out of this and finding new ways. And someone like you, who's very intuitive, as far as from a business standpoint, I'm sure you're going to find a way for this, uh, to do something unique and different. At least, you know, that's the pressure I'm putting on you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we're we're trying. We actually, um, uh, my company, Venue, um, uh, which is the, the company I've been running now for four years, uh, we've developed technologies 
that are directly going, you know, going to affect um, in a positive way uh, the lives of uh, musicians and songwriters. Um, we've got one technology called Soundster, and that's S O U N D S C R, which is now going in a beta test. And Soundster uh, really fills a void that very few people know about, which is when music is played in public spaces, uh, and even on radio to to a degree, um, the, the the way that its uh, license usually involves a blanket license from one of the PROs like ASCAP or BMI that covers literally the whole catalog. But unfortunately, uh, many, many cases, not anywhere near the full catalog is even being played. And what's worse is that not only is ASCAP and BMI, you know, they frequently file lawsuits against, you know, small mom and pop yeah. uh, mm-hmm. uh, venues that, you know, they don't, they're not licensed or whatever uh, because nine times out of 10, they can't afford it. Um, but uh, the, the real tragedy not only lies there, but the fact that BMI, ASCAP, and CSAC don't have any way of knowing exactly who to pay when that music's being played. So most of the time, you know, there's a, about a billion dollars worth of royalties collected every year that nobody really knows where it goes to. You know, we think it goes to some of the top touring artists and maybe some of the top artists that are played on uh, on radio, but that leaves, you know, guys... Uh, that may have, you know, been at the top of their game, like Peter Frampton, whose songs are no doubt played in every bar in this country oh, at one no point doubt, yeah. in time, you know, during the week. Guys like that are not getting paid uh, because ASCAP and BMI and CSAC don't have the ability to do that. So Soundster technology actually tracks the music and will, you know, not only give us a detailed, granular report of what songs are being played where, but we also will understand uh, what PRO... Uh, or PROs in, uh, are assigned, you know, to that song uh, in the catalog. And this puts tools in the hands of venues to negotiate better licensing deals mm. with PROs, and more importantly, gives artists, writers, and publishers tools that can say, hey, my song was played 500 times last week in these, you know, where's my money? Uh, small venues. Yeah. But, yeah, where's my money? You know, and that, that, that's a huge problem. And it happens in radio, too. You know, I mean, the oh, yeah. way that uh, the BDS and Media Base uh, sample they're not getting all the music that's played. And, and a great example of this is uh, my colleague uh, in Venue, who was actually the founder of uh, Soundster. His name is Aaron Bucarelli. And Aaron uh, was the drummer for Hawthorne Heights, a, a oh, yeah. mm-hmm. platinum selling band. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he found out uh, that he was uh, not getting paid for a song that uh, the radio stations were playing in Cincinnati every time a, uh, a Reds game uh, was on to the tune of half a million dollars in royalties. He was oh, being good paid. Lord. You know? <laughs> that's, that's a few rent payments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's big money, you know. So what we're trying to do with Soundstreet is fix a broken system and eventually, hopefully, we'll be able to enable what I would call a utility model where if a song is played, you know, in, in a music space, uh, whether it's a bar, a restaurant, or a health center or whatever, um, at the end of the day, there'll be a payment issued to that to, oh, the, definitely. to the stakeholder. Deservedly you know? so. And that's just not happening. Yeah, it's not happening right now. Yeah, that's definitely you know, so. That's really. Fix. Yeah, so I know that was kind of a long story, but, but you know, this is part of the problem in the music industry in general in that there's too many uh, gray areas, and the, the actual creators and stakeholders are not being paid like they should. And we want to make sure that that, that happens, that they get paid. Yeah, I mean, that's something that there's so many different venues and avenues now to get music. It, and trying to find that out is probably trying to find, like, needle in the haystack as to, to get the actuality of what's actually getting done. Zach, uh, for an ordinary right. girl, um, what, what are your next plans? Are you right? Are you still doing some more writing, or are you going to let this one and publicly you know, play this out and as far as push out as much as you can on this EP? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, our plan right now is uh, pretty much exactly like you said. We want, we want to continue pushing uh, Ordinary Girl and get as much traction as we can with that song. And I do, I really love that song, but there's, you know, five other brand new, uh, excuse me, four other brand new original songs on that EP plus the bonus track is uh, Rutherford Drive. Rutherford Drive, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, Thank you, man. Yeah. Um, but those are, you know, the other songs are really great songs. They have meanings. Uh, and uh, we're absolutely going to be uh, pushing the rest of the EP out, you know, once uh, Ordinary Girl plays out through its cycle. Very cool. And then, uh, you know, hit the road next year and get back to touring hopefully at some point. So obviously people can follow you on YouTube. Where can they follow you on the social handles at? Absolutely. So on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Instagram, it's all Zach Bear Official, Z-A-C-H-B-A-I-R 
official. And then uh, our website, of course, is ZachBearMusic.com, Z-A-C-H-B-A-I-R Music.com. And uh, Twitter is ZBear uh, Official, I believe. Yep, that's it. I look at it right here. Perfect. Zach, thanks so much for joining the show. Open invitation anytime uh, you want to call in or if you're in town, we'd love to chat with you and uh, look forward to seeing you in person one day soon. Absolutely. And thank you very much for having on uh, having me on the show and hope you guys have a rest of your uh, awesome day. All right. You too, man.